The clothes store Monsoon has said that its female changing rooms are open to both sexes. After teenager Charlie Moore, uh, who identifies as non-binary, was left humiliated when they were blocked from the women's fitting room to try on a prom dress. Monsoon later apologised, saying that its changing rooms are open and available to all customers. And the incident comes after the Equality and Human Rights uh, Commission said it is perfectly legal for public bodies and businesses to limit services to a single sex. So let's have a look at this story. So Charlie is 18. Now, we wouldn't know about this story if Charlie hadn't gone on Twitter and said, Hi, Monsoon, UK. Just been into your Birmingham store to try on a couple of prom dresses, but was told I wasn't allowed to because of my gender assigned at birth. Could you confirm if this is the company policy? Thank you. Now, of course, this the UK being the UK, uh, some eagle-eyed uh, journalist <laughs> <laughs> saw that and thought, oh, this is good, and uh, have basically written about it. And, and Monsoon were, had apologised and they gave Charlie some free dresses for the perfect uh, prom dress that they would need. But this raises, I think, I think, a very, very important debate, a really important issue about safe spaces for mm. Females. It is not just about whether you should be able to try and address without somebody seeing your bottom through the curtain of a changing room, although that is obviously important to us. But it is about having safe spaces for women that are not compromised because one individual makes a bit of a fuss. Mm. Nabala, come, coming to you, um, is that a, am I summing that up in a little bit of a simplistic way or do you agree with me? Well, I think it's simplistic but fair. Yeah. I mean, it's all about safe spaces in the end and safe spaces for everybody. And uh, the uh, UK's uh, equality body has actually reacted to this story and they have said that Munson were in fact within their rights to remove Charlie uh, from the changing room following complaints from uh, um, women and idiot children, uh, but only as long as a gender neutral changing room was also provided for uh, transgender people and indeed non-binary pe people. So the, um, co the Equality Commission guidelines to limit um, services to single-sex people uh, comes with the caveat if the reasons are justifiable and indeed uh, uh, proportionate. Well, in this case, it seems, seems reasonable to assume that they were all that mm. because they were complaints by women and indeed children. And I think they should, you know, we should move the debate to uh, allowing specific spaces for transgender people, non-binary people, not just in services uh, uh, as in this case, but also the debate is expanding to a whole uh, host of areas in society, mm. including uh, transgender people being allowed to compete with women in sports, but also to use facilities such as uh, changing room hospitals, prison services uh, and, and the like, uh, shelters, uh, you name it. Uh, I think it's fair to say that the law should protect individuals individuals uh, such as these women and their children in this uh, case of this uh, uh, story to assert their right in relation to issue, issues such as privacy, decency and, and indeed the right to prevent trauma. And, and in, in one very uh, fair way, in my view, to look at it is one individual's liberty stop when they encroach on other people's mm. uh, freedoms. Well, I, I can promise your listeners that when I try on my prom dress, I'm going to do it in a, a, in a male <laughs> changing room. <laughs> And I will not encroach on anybody else. I, I think the very fact that we're having this discussion indicates how messed up uh, British culture has become. Uh, we're getting to the point now where we're kind of trying to reorganize our life around the attempt by a very small number of people to play around with their identity. So we have to annihilate our own identity mm -hmm. and subordinate who we are in order to make some other people comfortable, whereas there's a very sensible solution to this. You know, let transgender uh, people who believe in, tra in gender neutrality have their own changing room you know, so they can hang out with each other but allow women to be only with women, biological women, and men to be only with biological men. It's a very kind of obvious point to me, but the, the issue at stake is that from their point of view, that's no good. Mm. They want to impose their culture on us, so they want to they be with women you know, biological woman, because that way they can demonstrate that they are the same as far as the identity is concerned. Well, it's really complicated, this, isn't it? Because, of course, no. if, you are, if you are a transgender person who has transitioned from male to female, 
you are presumably happy to use and, and wish to use the female facilities, be that a changing room, a toilet, a prison, a hospital, whatever. If you are female, transitioned to male, you want to use the male facilities. This person, Charlie, is a non-binary person. So are we saying that we have to also provide yeah. facilities for people who don't fit into either category? I kind of think, no. Mm. Alex? Well, since the dawn of recorded time, women have fought for equality with men. And as we live through the first sort of two, three generations at most, which it might even be argued that that's been realised, we now have a clutch of, and it mostly is men, uh, claiming to be female and saying, now I get to come into the female space that you've won. Yep. I mean, I can't f think of a better example of the patriarchy in action, right? And yet it's, it's the only old-fashioned conservatives who seem to be on the side of feminists and saying you're entitled to be a woman and have a safe space. It seems to me that, especially in these examples, we run the risk of letting a vanishingly small but very loud group of people who've bizarrely demanded the uh, defence of, of feminists to be on their side when their actions are de profoundly anti-feminist, not just to distort society, as Frank was setting out, but basically make a farce of women's sports, yeah. um, embarrass... I mean, I always feel sorry for businesses like the ones that have just been picked out yeah. here. No, I mean, ter terribly they sorry for the win from drag a of the public eye. I mean, they apologise because yeah. that seemed like it was the right... I just, it, it makes a mockery of a whole series of things. And, they, and we are supposed to pretend that black is white and that up is down. There has to come a time when we say, stop, if you've got a penis, you're not a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and that's yeah. the bottom I'll drink to that. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and on that bombshell. No, but I mean, I think the thing is, that, as, a, as I say, this particular individual, Charlie, I, we, we do not know what his... Uh, what, no, he says he was a... This is, this is why it's complicated, right? Does he say that he was born a... Me I think he was born a... Me oh, a friend... Another... Oh, there was two of them, Ch Charlie and his mates. Uh, his <laughs> friend does not identify as female, but... Pre OK, I've got it now. Because his friend presents in a more feminine way, even though he is also non-binary. It's very complicated, isn't it? Yeah. And so I guess what we're saying is we're in a period of transition, are we not, where we would all agree it is wonderful that we are not living in a homophobic world anymore. Of course. That people are free to choose and to dress as they like, whether that's mm -hmm. in a monsoon changing room or in the privacy of their own home, that they should be free to do that. But we are at risk of making such huge cultural shifts and that those will be at the expense of women, as Alex has just said, aren't they? Because I can't think of many instances in this debate which are at the expense of men. But you, you put your finger on where the problem lies, I think, because now we are talking about... Uh, these issues involving huge societal shifts and that's where it's not a niche issue it's not something that's uh, you know uh, irrelevant it's becoming very much to the fore and that's why it there is, it's crucial that the legislator steps in mm. you know the legislature only comes in when uh, a prob there's a substantial problem and i think it's becoming one because on the one hand you've got a group with legitimate uh, uh, you know uh, legitimate um, uh, agenda wanting to exist wanting to have a safe space in society and nobody would want to deny them that space but on the other hand there's another group of people who feel threatened so we have to get the legislature to come in and legislate in a fair manner so so that everybody feels comfortable, uh, in, uh, protected, and indeed included. Yeah, but we, when we have laws coming in, we always uh, tend to make things worse because the minute you have new rules and laws on interpersonal relationship, we heighten the tensions and the conflict. And the experience shows the last 20 years is that laws don't create a nice, normal, harmonious situation. What laws create is a demand for even more laws. Well, they put boundaries, at least, and well, especially in institutions such as schools, hospitals, which are government-run yeah, institutions. But the boundaries were already there. The you know, when I was a young man, I would see there's a toilet with a man on it. I would know that's a male toilet. There would be a toilet with a woman on it. It's a woman toilet. Now all that we need to do is to make sure that we have uh, some gender-neutral uh, sort of toilets made available. And, and then the, the problem solved. Well, you would hope that common sense would prevail, but in some situations, it's not the case. Yeah. But in part because people are positively out to have the problem. People are out to provoke the issue. Now, actually, I mean, I don't know about this individual's example, and put that to one side. My point is that some people will go out of their way to be told they can't do something. It's like men who've tried to go and have a wax and be told, well, sorry, we only do women. At which point, this big, hairy, bearded bloke says, you're discriminating against me because you won't wax my nether regions. I mean, it's, it's, it, you are deliberately trying to provoke the situation and then call the other person bigoted. It's quite wrong. But 
I think there's some... It's quite to, to go to get a back sack and crack if we, this is what we're getting at here, Alex, isn't it? I think that's quite different. I think they would have a point to say, you should, you, you should be able to treat me to give me the beauty therapy well, that a, I a, need. Apparently not. So apparently this, this poor woman recently who, who was asked to go and give a bloke a Brazilian said, well, <laughs> I can't because you don't have the requisite equipment. Oh, I see. And I, exactly. And so you meant that put the therapist in a vulnerable it puts the position. Thera it puts the therapist in a room mm, with a yeah. person with a penis who's saying, I want, a, I want a Brazilian. And I would think in that situation, though, the relationship exists uh, between a beauty therapist and their, and their client. It, it should clearly be obvious that whether that beauty therapist is prepared to treat that man's exactly. nether regions with the wax or not. But I think... That, that is sort of easily fixable, right? You say, that is not what I do. This, these are my personal boundaries. But what's happening in these debates is it's the boundaries are being changed for all of us. And as a mother of two daughters, I particularly worry about toilets becoming joint spaces because um, as women fought to have a space where we could... The public toilets allowed us to go out into the world. It's crazy we, to think that there was a time when there were no public yes, toilets for yes. women. That bought us our liberty. And actually, there was a time but for me growing up, that if a man walked into a women's toilet, you knew he was up to no good. It was mm. the safe space you could go to. If you're on a night out, you felt threatened, yeah. you could go in the women's toilets. My daughters are very much at risk of never having that. And that worries me. But and also, people claim that's progress. Yeah. And it's not progress. Mm. No. Because Wait. it also renders young men vulnerable. Because yeah. if a teenage boy goes into the mixed toilets and yeah. can be accused of something he hasn't done, well, no one else was there and we were in the toilets. But right? also, especially with young girls, it confuses them. Because when that boy dressed up as a girl comes into the toilet, he's saying that I'm just like you are. And you better believe it, you better accept it. And that confuses people's identity when they're very, very young. And actually, you're, you're so right, Frank. And, it, and it's about, you've been getting in touch with us on, on socials. I'm going to come to those in just a moment. Thank you. Um, but it's about understanding um, the difference as well, actually, critically, between children and adults. Exactly. Because when I took my young children to the swimming pool just for a swim when they were little, there became a point when it was inappropriate to have my son in the girls' toilets and that's a kind of right of changing rooms that's a right yeah. of passage isn't it well you you need to go in there with daddy now because you're too old to be in here with the girls and that i mean i know that there'll be people watching this going but you are so old-fashioned bev you are so outdated <clears throat> that is an important lesson for both genders to learn it's it's the essential foundation of child development yeah the first distinction they make is between the two genders and that boundary becomes confused as it is now it's going to mess up a whole generation of young kids. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do we fix this, eh? Right, what have you been saying? Uh, monsoon changing rooms. Deirdre has said female changing rooms should only be for the use of biological females. End of. Uh, Peter says, if, if Charlie tried to enter the female dressing rooms while my niece was in there, uh, trying on her prom dress, I would ask him to wait until she had left. If he insisted on entering, I would physically prevent him. This is the problem, is it causes genuine conflicts and arguments, probably where there doesn't need to be any, but mm -hmm. somehow we have to all live together. Barbara says, uh, can't he go into the men's and try on dresses there? What actually is the difference? Well, uh, the trouble is Monsoon is a women's shop. That's why there was no male changing rooms. And Sandra has said uh, making separate changing rooms for trans women. Um, I'm not sure that separate, entirely separate entities work. Do they, Nabella? Well, I think they do. I mean, if everybody feels safe in the end and not excluded, then I think that's the way forward. You see, I, I, this again, this is a lot of people are going to say this is a, that's a terrible thing to say, but I have heard the suggestion that actually the disabled toilets, which we quite rightly should have yeah. for people to use. And I often wondered if you, if you are in a wheelchair, how you must be so frustrated by this conversation because it took a very, very long time to provide disability yes. toilets. Mm. And a lot of buildings still don't get that right. And yet, a very noisy minority come along and say, but I want, to, I want a space for me. And we are going to, it looks like we're going to accommodate it if we're not careful. Yes, and, and, and I think it, it's turning into the tyranny of the minority in a way. Yeah. Um, now, we don't want to stigmatize any group. Um, you know, they're perfectly entitled to feel part and parcel of society, comfortable in their bodies, comfortable in their workplace and, and the rest of it. But, and there's a big but, which is a caveat of the vast majority of other people who have equal rights. Yeah. Mm. Tyranny of the minority, Frank. Yeah. I mean, I don't want my children or anybody else's children being confused 
because the small number of people decide that they want to play with their identity because they will mess up their identity. And that, to me, is the crucial issue. That's much more important than anybody's individual needs. We're talking about a whole generation of young people mm. who are growing up disoriented and confused. Mm. 